Headquarters in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program today. Ask a question or make a comment, and we will put you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Good for anything your heart desires over at the service center. You can apply it toward an ultimate upgrade. You can apply it toward a computer repair. Maybe get that maintenance checkup done you've been putting off. Uh, you can do anything you like over there. $25 off just for being a part of the program today. We are live streaming on Facebook, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. So you can uh, follow us there, uh, take a look at the show, watch it live. Now, uh, I think we have the audio stuff resolved here. I'm going to check one last thing while I am uh, chatting. I want to make sure that my microphone suite is set to the correct. Uh, now I'm on the microphone array. So, yeah, we want to make sure that you can hear the callers. All right, so there'll be a little blip in the audio here. Sorry about that. Dun, dun, dun. We just fine on there. It looks like it might be a little hot, so we're going to drop the levels a little bit. There we go. All right, if the audio is not good, if you don't like it, let me know. If you love it, no, let me know. <laughs> All right, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. That's how you can join us on the program today. All right, we have a bunch of stuff to go over today. So uh, first of all, you know when you're, when you're browsing the Internet and you see the little padlock up in the top left corner or the secure bar, you believe the site's secure, right? Well, that's not always the case anymore. Um, so we're going to tell you, and this is uh, going back to Google Chrome. Again, if you have a website out there, guys, this is a, uh, something you want to hear because Google is pushing the envelope ever further. Now they're going to start marking any website that is not on a secure socket layer. It won't just be a lack of the secure bar up there. It'll be a big, fat, red, insecure. Like you're not secure. Like you shouldn't be here, which is going to be bad for website owners. So, you know, it's one of those things where – if you have a website, if you have an organization that has a website like a church or a school or a business, personal blog, you're going to want to get a secure socket certificate so that your website will be labeled as secure. So that's something that's, uh, that's kind of firing right now on the day. The other thing also is uh, if you have an iPhone or an Android device, um, you may have noticed in the last few days there's been an update for both frameworks, Android and Apple. Um, it's very, very highly recommended that you install this update because this update is primarily here to plug a vulnerability in your Wi-Fi chipset. Yes, that's right. The, the Wi-Fi chips are now so smart, they're so powerful as little mini processors themselves, that bad guys can hijack your Wi-Fi chip and use your Wi-Fi chip itself to do bad things. Yeah, this is like, this is nuts. I mean, that... A Wi-Fi chip is that powerful, so you got to make sure that you get that covered. So if you have that update that you've been you know, putting off installing on your phone, uh, you want to make sure that that gets done pretty quickly here because otherwise, if not, it's not going to work well. All right, so ultimate upgrade. Still in effect over at Schrock. It's been, uh, it's been pretty popular. You know, the thing that's been weird is the, uh, this time with the ultimate upgrade, we opened up the, uh, the shipping on our website, because you can buy online at schrockinnovations.com. We've had lots of people coming into the service centers. We've only had three computers purchased online, though. It's kind of kind of interesting. You know, everybody told us, hey, we're so excited to buy computers online. This is awesome. We've been waiting for this, and then, you know, we get three. Um, but especially because we can ship them outside of our service area now. So if you're outside of the Omaha metro area or the Lincoln metro area, you know, if you're in, you know, Texas, if you're in Kansas, if you're in New York, we can ship you a computer. We already received data recoveries from all across the country coming into our Omaha service center for repair and recovering of data. It's only natural that we have computers go in the other direction. Um, you know, with the new website, we didn't want to do everything at one time. You know, here's a new website. Here's uh, buy stuff online. Here's the credit card stuff. And, oh, here's the shipping stuff and, you know, figuring out shipping rates and weights and all that. We didn't want to do all that at the same time. So we first, for the maintenance checkup sale, we did here you can buy stuff online. And then next, once we had that taken care of, now we've opened up the shipping side of things. So with the shipping side of things open now, you can actually purchase an ultimate upgrade on our website at schrockinnovations.com. If you're local, you can pick it up locally. You don't have to pay shipping. You can pick it up locally, and that's fine. Uh, if, on the other hand, you're not local, we'll ship the computer to you, laptop or desktop. Uh, and the shipping rates are pretty reasonable, so it's not, uh, it's not crazy shipping or anything like that. But the ultimate upgrade, if you're new to the program, and maybe this is the first time that you've come in, um, on the 11th, which is two days from today, Microsoft will have Patch Tuesday, and it will be the final Patch Tuesday for Windows Vista. 
after that patch Tuesday, your Windows Vista machine day by day by day will become less and less and less secure day by day by day. And within a month, two months after this next patch Tuesday here on the 11th, your Windows Vista computer will literally be unsafe to use on the Internet. Because what happens is they're called zero-day vulnerabilities for a reason. Zero-day meaning the day it hits is zero-day. On The Walking Dead, when the virus first hits and people start waking up from being dead, that's zero-day. That's, oh, wow, look at that. And then it's zero plus one for day one, zero plus two for day two. Well, a zero-day attack means... We wait until Microsoft releases their patches on Tuesday. We know they're never going to patch Vista again. So we're going to take all this big, this big giant mug of vulnerabilities, and we're not going to drink it. Not going to drink it yet. We're going to wait. Because if I just wait until Wednesday, <laughs> bottoms up, we can have these vulnerabilities forever. They're never going to patch them. And we can use them over and over and over. And anybody anywhere using Windows Vista is going to be epically hosed for all time. That's what's going to happen on the 12th. And it's just going to get worse because the first guys that do it are the guys that know what they're doing. After a period of time, they call them script kitties. They're, they're bad guys. They're aspiring bad guys. It's like Gru, you know? It, it, despicable me. They're aspiring evil dudes that aren't just quite good enough to do it on their own. So what they do is they look at the guys before them and say, ooh, look what they did with that. I'm going to do that too. And so they, they follow along. So those script kitties are going to jump on the bandwagon. And eventually that takes place a month, two months later. Eventually your Windows Vista computers are going to be completely, completely shot. So let's see. Da, 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 looking at Facebook comments. Upgrade for my phones? Oh, I'm like, I don't, this is the ultimate upgrade for your computer, guys. And I'm looking at the Facebook comments and they're like, I missed it. What's the upgrade for your phone? Okay, the, there's no ultimate upgrade for your phone. It's for your computer, your laptop, your desktop. There's a software update available for iPhone and Android phones. And sometimes your carrier, depending on your carrier, I have Sprint. Mine came through. Um, Interesting side note here. I know we're talking about ultimate upgrade, and I got pulled back in by Facebook comments. And I'll, I'll, I'll throw a, a, a big uh, good morning to Michigan back at you there, Loan. But uh, one of the things that is a problem with Android, see, Apple is one ecosystem. So if Apple pushes out an update, everybody on Apple gets it. Like, boom, it's done. When, Android, when Google, the maker of the Android operating system, pushes out an update for Android, the update first goes to all the carriers. And then the carriers will sit on it, mess around with it, and uh, maybe we'll do it. Maybe now we have to add our flavors to it. We got to, oh, maybe we can have these apps added and these apps removed because they stopped paying us. And if we're going to do an update, we may as well throw a new logo on the phone when we first turn it on, right? Oh, look, it's Sprint or Verizon or T-Mobile. Okay, great. But it takes time to get the updates out. Meanwhile, bad guys are just exploiting the heck out of your phone. So Google's had enough of it. Google's now saying, guess what? If you don't have a current version of Android on your device, you cannot access the Google Play Store. That means you can't get apps unless your device is current. And how could your device be current? Well, you have to have the updates. So, you know, Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, if you don't push out these updates within a reasonable amount of time, say 30 days, all of your customers are going to call you because the Google Play Store will stop working and they can't get apps anymore and they can't get updates for apps. Oh, biscuits. So now the, the carriers are pushing out these updates super fast, which also, by the way, leads to less testing, which means you might get more than one. You might get one that installs the security fix and does something to completely drain your battery. And then a week later, they figure it out and they send out a second one that fixes the battery problem because they didn't have enough time to do it the first time. So, uh, so that's what's going on in Android. So depending on your carrier, you may not get that update just yet, but it is coming. And when you do get that little alert that pops up on your screen saying software update available, make sure you install it. You know, I, I tell mine to install overnight. You can schedule it now. I, I told it to schedule it to, you know, 5 a.m. Because, you know, if it wakes me up accidentally, it's not the end of the world at 5 a.m., um, but the odds of me waking up at 5 a.m. are pretty small. So <laughs> you never get up at 5 a.m. No, never. All right, 402-558-1110, are the numbers to join us on the program. So we're talking about the ultimate upgrade. The ultimate upgrade, if you're new to the program, is your opportunity to trade in any old, tired, 
worn out piece of junk computer that's sitting in the garage or sitting in the attic or sitting on the desk under a plastic protector. If your computer is under a plastic protector, you need to trade it in. They haven't sold plastic protectors for computers in I don't know how long. The plastic protector is probably older than some people's computers. You need to trade it in. You need to get it out of there and get some new computer in its place that's going to do its job. And that's what the ultimate upgrade is for. You can trade in any laptop, any desktop. We don't care what's in it. We don't care if it works or not. Sometimes we have people that will go to turn one in and they'll completely shelve a thing. Like it, they, they give it to us and it's like a metal box and everything, all the guts have been removed. And we're like, really? You, you took time doing that? Well, whatever, you know, we, we put it in the stack with the others. And you can see if you walk up to like our Omaha or Papillion or Lincoln Service Centers, you can kind of look in the window in the back and you can see this big stack of computers back there as people are bringing in their trade-ins and trading them in. So why do we do the trade-ins if we don't take anything out of them? This is our push uh, for e-waste, you know, e-waste cleanup. Um, you know, it's one thing to be like super green guy. Yay, I'm an earth-saving guy. woo -hoo! You know, in reality... I don't really think that our ultimate upgrade sale is going to save the planet. You know, maybe you would disagree. Maybe maybe Mother Earth is very appreciative that we've removed this wart from her backside of these computers that are going to go into landfills otherwise. But, <laughs> no pun intended. On the other hand, there's a difference between being, you know, kumbaya, we are the world, and being corporately responsible. We produce computers. We introduce these materials into the ecosystem, uh, your, your computer. We sell you computers that have mercury and cadmium and all kinds of other good stuff that, you know, that people need, you know. <laughs> and when you're done using it, typically people just throw it away and they put it out for the trash man and the trash man, you know, takes it and steals your identity and then throws the rest in the trash. But when you trade it in at Schrock, the hard drive in your computer gets blanked. Like we will, we would we erase the hard drive. Then we recycle the computer. It actually gets ground up. It goes to a company in Des Moines. They do like a monthly pickup for us. They come out. They pick everything up. They take it. They grind it all up. We get a receipt and a certificate. That they were all destroyed and ground up. Um, and it's our way of making sure that we're having a zero impact when it comes to that stuff. In fact, we recycle more stuff than we sell um, because we, you can drop off a computer anytime during the year for free. So when we recycle it during the year, that's great. When we do it during the ultimate upgrade sale, the point is – Let's get this old Dell, or this old HP, or this old Gateway, or this old Compaq, or this old Commodore. No joke. We've, <laughs> we've had some Commodores. Um, so, you know, if you don't know what a Commodore is, well, you know, you can, you can Google it. Uh, there's a Wikipedia entry. But, uh, but basically, we recycle these computers and get them out of circulation. But during the Ultimate Upgrade, you actually get a credit or a value for trading in this computer. So you're going to get up to like $100 off the new computer. So for $450, you're getting a brand new laptop. For $450, you're getting a brand new desktop with your trade-in. Now, that alone is a good value considering, you know, Computers at Schrock, like for, and these are modular, just like the regular modular computers. I spent a lot of time on my show yesterday talking about we had a caller who called in who asked about some of the parts inside, about how we use parts that can grow with your family even in the ultimate upgrade. You know, Just because it's, an, it's the least expensive computer that we sell all year long doesn't mean we fill it full of junk. No, I mean we don't do Black Friday. We, we can't because like when you go to like Walmart on Black Friday and buy a laptop, you know what you're getting. Right. I mean, you might it might feel like a good deal, but deep down inside, if you're honest with yourself on that silent, silent night after you've loaded like four programs on the thing and it starts to crawl, you know what you got. Now, at Schrock, what happens is if we sell someone a computer like that, they take it home and load four programs on it and they know what they got. And you know what they do with it? They drive past that beautiful window that has it's in front of all those recycled computers and they throw theirs through it. <laughs> they they come right back to us. <laughs> so we can't sell junk because it comes right back to us. We're a local store. We can't do that. You know, returns for us are a big deal. We don't like that. And so we don't want to sell you a piece of garbage that's not going to do the job. So we're going to build a good computer, whether it's an ultimate upgrade or a holiday special. It's going to be a quality computer. So when we build these machines up, you get them at the trade-in for 450 One of the things that is blowing people's mind this year is that this year's ultimate upgrade at $450 is coming with a solid state hard drive. Go ahead, jump online, price out a solid state hard drive for yourself. They could be upwards of, you know, some of them are upwards of, you know, $1400 for the really big ones, and for the really small ones, you know, they're 90, 100 bucks. 
So, and that, and that's like where I say small, I mean 120, not like eight. You know, come on, not that small. It's not a flash drive. Give me a break. Um, but when you're talking about a $450 computer and having that hard drive be like a quarter of the cost, Windows is 100 bucks cost. That's another quarter of the cost of the computer right there. Boom. Um, so between those two parts, you're talking half the cost of the computer. Then you realize what a good deal this is. Now, if you go to Best Buy or the Mart or you know some other place where you buy a computer and you look at the prices, walk in and say, I want to see the cheapest computer you have. I don't care about screen size. I don't care about brand. I don't care about anything except for the fact that if it has a solid state hard drive show me the cheapest computer you have with a solid state hard drive of any size the price point will start at about eight hundred dollars that's why the ultimate upgrade is going bananas now in the service centers it's go it's it's again it's weird in lincoln we are selling desktops i mean boom 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 desktop 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 oh i want a laptop you weirdo desktop 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 <laughs> In the Omaha Service Center, it's laptop, 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 laptop. Ooh, I want a desktop. You weirdo. Laptop, laptop, laptop. And then in Papillion, it's an even blend. And it happens that way every computer sale. When we do the holiday special, laptops fly out of the Omaha shop, desktops fly out of Lincoln, and Papillion pretty much has an even split. So when I look at the numbers, I'm like, wow, we've been selling pretty much even. When I talk to my people, they're like, oh, no, not at all. And then I talk to more people and like, oh, no, not at all. But in the other direction, it's, it's really weird. So Lincoln prefers their desktops. Omaha prefers their laptops. And people in Papillion just can't make up their mind. So they need one of each. That's just, that's just how you roll in Papillion. So, uh, so, yeah, it's fun times. Now, here's the thing. With the ultimate upgrade, obviously, we, we're selling these computers really inexpensively. We're not making a lot of money. We even, you know, the thing is, it's not even like the Dell thing where you get the catalog and the computer's like, $400 for the Dell of your choice. And you're like, wow, that's a great deal, mom. And you throw through the catalog and you call the 800 number. And by the time you're off the phone, somehow, some way, you're at $1,200 every time. No matter what you – and I've had, I've had a couple customers that called Dell and literally said no to everything. And they got the $400 computer. And you know what they said? It was terrible. It was the worst computer they ever bought. It was slow. It didn't work right. And then you know what they – the next thing they said is I, I should have taken that memory upgrade. I should have taken that hard drive upgrade, or I should have taken that processor upgrade, or maybe I should have taken all three. Then you just spent $1,200. <laughs> That's how the Dell model works. Now, if you go on our website at shrockinnovations.com, you can actually price out an ultimate upgrade, and you can say, okay, it's $450. So, Thor, you've told me it's not a piece of garbage for $450. What, what are the upgrades? You told me you're also not making a whole lot of money on it at $450. So, you know, you got to make your money somewhere. What are the upgrades? Is that where you're doing it? Wow, wow, I can double my memory. That's cool. For 80 bucks. Go price out the memory chips, guys. 80 bucks. <laughs> Thomas. Thomas on Facebook has been there, done that. Oh, yeah, those Dell, the, the Dell catalogs are hilarious. And then my, my dad, he always saves them for me. Like, you know, like everybody in America got this, right, Dad? I think I got one of these. I got probably four of them. But he saves them for me just in case. You know, if there's ever an ad for, like, something computer-related in a magazine, he'll save it, clip it out, and, like, hold it for me. I love my dad. But um, so, yeah, I get a lot of Dell catalogs. But uh, if you look on our website, the ultimate upgrade, the, the memory upgrades are 80 bucks. You can double the size of your solid state for $80. Now, it comes with a 120 Go price out a 250 solid state. Guess how much it is? $80. So we've got some pretty good deals with our suppliers to get these prices to you. We're, we're not – trust me, I'm, I'm not taking a Caribbean vacation based on this sale. We're not making that much money. But we're making enough money that it's worth our time to do it, and we can deliver an amazing value to you guys. So that, that's what it's all about, right? So check out the Ultimate Upgrade. If you're in the market for a computer, if you have Windows Vista, you've got to do something. Like literally you must do something. Um, if you, to know, how do you know if you have Windows Vista? If you click on the Start menu in the lower left-hand corner and then right-click on Computer. So click left-click on Start. The Start menu will pop up. Right-click on the word Computer. If you don't see the word computer, you don't have Windows Vista. Right-click on the word computer. It'll be in the right-hand column. And then go to Properties and left-click on Properties. And it'll tell you if you're running Windows Vista. The easy way to tell is if you look in the lower left-hand corner of your screen and your Start menu is a circle, you're either running Windows Vista or Windows 7. Either way, the computer will be there. You, you know, Go ahead and left-click on the Start menu, right-click on Computer, 
left click on properties it'll tell you what you're running but uh, nevertheless if you're looking for an excuse if you have a tax return coming if you know you've come into a windfall if you've got a scratch ticket and won the lottery you know if you need a new computer this is the opportunity to do it you're not going to get a modular computer less than for less than $450 any time throughout the year so this is your time to do it at Schrock Innovations 402-558-1110 800-543-1110-ED is the first caller of the program and right now a shoe in for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate, Ed, what can I do for you today on Compute This? Uh, uh, at your Omaha store, do you have an employee named Kyle? I do. Okay. I tell you what. Uh, observe the race. Oh, my gosh. That's terrible. <laughs> can you hear me, Ed? Ed uh, anyway. No, th this is hilarious. Ed, your cell phone is totally breaking up, and you're like, I just want to tell you one thing about this Kyle in Omaha. He's the... <laughs> anyway, anyway, my Firefox would work, and my Google Chrome would work. The only thing that would work would be Edge, and I, I called, and he did a shock test, and within... Five minutes, he had it fixed. Awesome. So uh, I, I appreciate you know him uh, getting on it right away, and uh, and, and he's good. I, I'm I'm glad that you got good employees. Yeah, he asked for a raise the other day, so I'm glad to know that he's still doing a good oh, job. Oh, well, then then maybe you ought to give him a raise. Yeah. Well, I did. That's the thing. And sometimes you know these guys, they get big heads. You give them a raise, they stop working. Oh. You know you get you you gotta you gotta hold them down. You know. <laughs> no, he's a, he's an excellent employee. He's a, he's one of the best. He's one of my best. He he did he did me good. He like I said, he 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 knows his stuff, and that's what you got to have. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much for the call, Ed. I really appreciate it. You know, a lot of times we will get phone calls from customers that um, that want to tell us you know something went wrong, or we'll get email, emails or Google reviews. Oh my gosh! All right, you, you're not going to believe this. Before we go to break, I got to tell you about this because it's super frustrating. All right, so. I don't want to, I'm not going to accuse you, but we are getting one star Google reviews, especially on our Lincoln service center. And I, you know, normally you'd think, Oh my gosh, there's something going wrong in Lincoln. What's going wrong in Lincoln that we're getting one star reviews all the time. And when we get a one star review or like a negative review of any kind, the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking into it. I'm figuring out what happened. I'm picking up the phone. I'm making calls. I'm seeing what I can do to make it better. Except all of these one star reviews that our Lincoln service center is getting don't exist in our system. They're all fake. Fake news. Ooh, it's the Russians. You know, the Russians and their fake news. Oh, arg. I don't know why they're Russian pirates now. But it's, oh my gosh, it's terrible. And see, the reason this is happening is because Google takes into account, like website owners out there, you need to listen to this. If you have a website, Google takes into account your reviews and the, the percentage. So if you have a 1,000 reviews, and you have like a 3.5 average, a company with five reviews and a five-star average can outrank you. So if you sandbag another company's reviews, it's really easy to find if – you're, if you're trying to pump yourself up by giving yourself or buying people, paying people to give you five-star reviews, that's really easy for Google to detect. But it's a lot harder for Google to detect somebody who goes out and gives competitors negative reviews to sandbag them. And so it's frustrating. It's so frustrating because you try to do a good job. And, and whenever there's a problem, everyone is quick to review. But when things go right, like what Ed was calling about, nobody posts a, a, a review. You know, we get Facebook reviews all the time, but Facebook reviews don't count toward Google. And Google reviews are harder because you have to actually have a, uh, a Google account to leave a Google review. And so some people don't have a Google account. So it's, it's, it's frustrating. So we're, we're working on a way to do that. We, you know, you want to solicit reviews, number one. Number two, you want to do it in a tasteful way so you're not asking for a five-star review. Like, if you had a five-star experience at Schrock, hint, 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 you should leave a five-star review on our website. You know, it, you don't want to ask for that stuff. So, you know, we, we try to do things like, hey, go review our website. If you like the website, right? And then, you know, we had some people give us four-star reviews on the website. We're like, okay, it's not perfect. We can get that. You know, we got one three-star review who was just like, meh, it's a website. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> Appreciate it. But uh, if you've had an experience like Ed in one of my service centers and uh, uh, it's been a phenomenal thing, let me tell you, let me put it this way. You want the employee that gave you a phenomenal experience to get a raise, write him a Google review. 
402-558-1110, Those are the numbers to join us on the program. All right, before we go to our bottom of the hour break here, I, I want to throw a quick thing out because you may not know about this. But right now, you know, we're on Facebook Live, so you can go to Facebook.com slash Rock Innovations. And, I mean, it's really exciting video. I thought, like, the start of these videos, like, for the first five seconds, if you don't capture somebody's attention, you know, they just leave. So I thought maybe for the start of the video next week I should have, like, a clown outfit on or something. Or, like, just something stupid. Or I should put, like, you know, a Chick-fil-A cow cut out in front of the camera. I, I don't know. But something that gets people to, like, listen for more than, like, you know, five seconds. But uh, if you're watching that right now, one of the things we do when we go to commercial breaks, I switch the microphone inputs. So you don't hear the news at the bottom of the hour. You get to hear some behind-the-scenes stuff. And then after the program is over at the end of the show, sometimes funny stuff happens during the show. And there's some funny stuff that I just can't. It wouldn't go good on the air, okay? So there's funny stuff that wouldn't go good on the air. But it's funny, right? So I can share it with you on Facebook after the program. If you stick around after the show, I'm not going to do something stupid and call it the after the show show. Woo! Because, you know, everybody on Fox has an after the show show, right? Woo! Uh, but we'll call it the... Um the post game show. That's original. Yeah, the post game show. And we'll get that. We'll marketing department get on that. Uh, but uh, but no. After after the program is over and during the commercial breaks, you can if you're tuned in on Facebook, you can we get a little inside baseball. For example, last week uh, at the end of the program, we discussed the possibilities of one of our service centers moving in December. Which service center was it? And where is it moving to? I actually solicited a lot of great feedback from listeners that uh, were concerned about the move of the service center and where we were thinking about moving it to. Um, and as a result, we developed some new options in the course of the last week. So it's a really interesting, neat way for me to kind of touch base with you guys and uh, and keep up. Double Shrock? What, what, what's a Double Shrock? Thomas Morrison says Double Shrock. Okay. Oh, Double Shrock. The name, okay, the after the show show. Double Shrock. Okay, got it. Like, Double Shrock is my audio looping? Like, I'm going through all these technical things in my head? Like, oh, no. No, okay. But uh, so if you want to listen after the... <laughs> <laughs> During the commercial breaks or after the show, it's nothing huge. It's not like we go for an hour or anything. It's just like, you know, a few minutes. I think last week was the longest one. It went like 15 minutes. And finally, they had to kick me out of the studio, so I had to go. But, uh, but no, we do some cool stuff. So we'll, we'll tell you what's going on with that and with some other options that we have popping up and uh, some cool plans. You know, um, I have – you know what? Let's do this. While we're in the break, think about this. We are making a, uh, a data backup program similar to something like a Carbonite but with some modifications and some changes. And so the question is, do you do a backup right now? And if you do a backup, do you do it locally or do you have an online service like Carbonite? We're going to go over some of the pros and cons of those things and how what we want to do at Schrock is going to make a different service uh, than what you would get from Carbonite. The price will be slightly lower, actually, about the same, slightly lower. Uh, but uh, but we're actually working on developing this software right now. Uh, and, it, you know, there's two reasons for it. But if it works out, we could make it available, kind of like we did with Drive Advisor. We could make it available to all people, to, you know, anyone, Schrock customers or otherwise. So uh, think about that through the break. Stick with us on Facebook, but we have more of Compute This coming up next. Schrock Innovation's line of modular computers last longer and perform better than those box store one-size-fits-all systems. When it's time to replace your computer, call Schrock at 934-9423 and find out why a modular computer is the last computer you will ever purchase. Can you hear me okay? That doesn't look like a very good uh, audio level there, so let me tune that up a little bit. Bear with me a second here. Like I said, I need a producer because do, managing all this while we are uh, on the air can be a challenge sometimes. All right, so let's go to levels and we're going to microphone boost. I'm on boost. Plus 20 decibels. There we go, 20 decibels. I think that's the magic number. All right, so um, last week I asked you guys off the air uh, during the, uh, the break if um, we were going to move the Papillion Service Center where we, sh where we should move it to. And we, lo we were looking at Bellevue at the time. Uh, we had uh, a few locations around Samsung, 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 Samsung Way, Samsung Way. Yeah, no, no such luck there. Uh, some bays around Sam, Samson Way, which is off 36th and Highway 370. Uh, one of our competitors actually is right in that bay. It was going to be a really bad day for him. His landlord is actually willing to rent us a space in the same strip mall he was in, knowing full well that it would probably put the guy out of business. I don't know if I want that guy to be my landlord, you know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, um, I talked about it on Facebook. And... 
Hey, Roger in Eureka, South Carolina, you use carbonite? All right, cool. We'll talk about that here in a second when we come back. But the uh, we looked at some other places in Papillion because a lot of the people in the after the show segment said, don't move it from Papillion. Try to keep it in the Papillion La Vista area. We love it here. Um, then I expressed some concerns about population base. You know, there's a lot more people in Bellevue. It's closer to Council Bluffs. So, you know, maybe it would uh, it would work better if we moved it to Bellevue. You know, maybe we'd have a little more foot traffic because our Omaha service center is just taking off. I mean, it's doing super well. Um, the Papillion service center is just kind of moving right along. You know, we're not gaining customers. We're not losing customers. It's just very consistent levels of business. Nothing wrong with consistent, but we want to see growth, too. Um, so, you know, maybe we can look at some different advertising options. You know, maybe people in Papillion don't listen to KFAB. <laughs> I don't know. See, that's the kind of stuff I can't say on the microphone. You know what I mean? Gary would like rip my head off. It'd be terrible. But uh, no, Gary's a good guy. But uh, so, yeah, so that's the kind of feedback that I look for here on the air. Things that uh, that we can do on Facebook while we're just killing time during commercial breaks. When you're hearing the news that you hear every 30 minutes anyway, you are, you know, we're, we're sending a carrier group to North Korea, a carrier strike group, not just a carrier. Uh, Russia is sending a destroyer at our destroyer. In case we want to launch more missiles, Assad launched more airstrikes from the airbase. You know, whatever. You know, <laughs> it's the same thing. All right. So this news report brought to you by Schrock Innovations. All right. We're going back on, guys. So I am going to switch my inputs here. And uh, we'll see you during the after the show show or the, the Schrock double or whatever we call it. I don't know about that. Schrock double. I don't know. I'm WOWT6 Weather Authority Meteorologist Peter Sherwood on News Radio 1110 KFAB. All righty, guys, welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company Service Centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. Our Lincoln Service Center is located on 27th and Pine Lake Road. Uh, we're open today from noon until 5 in all three locations in Omaha. We're located at 168th and Burke. That's right off the 168th and Dodge. That's right beside the Village Point Mall. That's right across the street from Best Buy, where I might add the rent is cheaper. Also in Papillion, on the corner of 72nd and Highway 370. The number to join us on the program this morning is 402-558-1110, um, Boy, we've had one call, Ed. One call. Well, does that even count as a full call? Was that like a half call? It was hilarious because I don't think he actually heard me telling him his cell phone was breaking up. He just kept going, you know. It was... <laughs> It's pretty funny, but uh, but no, Ed had a great experience with Kyle. So Ed's the only caller of the show. So your odds of winning are pretty good. If you're thinking about doing an ultimate upgrade, why not call in and get a twenty five dollars Schrock Innovations gift certificate? All right. <laughs> uh oh, the lovely Kimberly says no after the show show today. No double Schrock. You have hungry kids waiting on you at home. <gasps> oh no, the children. <laughs> oh no. All right. Well, you better get your calls in now then. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. All right. So uh, we talked about the ultimate upgrade. We did all this stuff. Let's get into some of the security news of the week here. Uh, the Chrome browser has a little button that pops up in the top left corner that tells you it's secure when, you're, when the website is secure. So if you're on a site like shrockinnovations.com that has a secure socket certificate, you get a green bar, the padlock, the whole Anchorito making you feel safe and comfortable about your purchase from Schrock Innovations. Now, I'm saying that tongue-in-cheek a little bit, but honestly, if you've noticed those little uh, McAfee safe buttons and the, the Norton safe web and, and all that stuff that pops up on the checkout carts, it's been statistically proven that that stupid little graphic, and no one even knows how you get the graphic, right? Like, have you guys ever stopped to ask, like, how do you get that McAfee safe graphic? You pay money. And you get the graphic. They, they do a cursory scan of your website. They check basic stuff that any moron running a website should be able to get. And they give you a little graphic. But it's been split test proven that that stupid little graphic will increase your conversion rate by 60% and reduce abandoned shopping carts. Same thing with a money-back guaranteed seal. It's got to be a gold seal. It's got to have the little points on it. And putting that little gold seal on there will increase your conversion rate. You'll see that seal on secureupdater.com, by the way, for that very reason. There you go. Money back guarantee. No risk. They call it risk reversal in the industry. So anyway, um, 
this little green bar does the same thing at the top. It makes people feel good that they're on a safe website. However, website owners, attention. This is, uh, this is where you need to get in touch with Schrock Interactive if you are uh, considering doing anything web-related. Now, Google is going to change the way that they're handling HTTP websites, the non-secure websites. In the past, what you would see is there's like a letter I for information in a circle, and then there's a padlock with a line through it or something saying it's not secure. And you can click on that, and you can see all the things. How many cookies is it using? Blah, 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 blah. You can read all of the side effects on the back of the medicine bottle if you're so inclined to. Doesn't really matter. Won't happen to you. Blah, 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 blah. Unless you're that one person, <laughs> and then it all happens to you. But uh, but basically, the uh, what Google Chrome is going to start doing here soon is they're going to start putting a red box at the top that says insecure on every website that's not on a secure socket layer. Now, right now, they're only doing that on websites that have shopping carts that allow you to check out in a non-secure way. That's bad. That, that causes people to get their credit card information stolen. There's no reason why Billy Bob's personal blog from the Billy Bob Gator Company needs to have a secure socket layer. He doesn't need to spend the money annually. It costs money every year to have a secure socket layer. It's not stupid expensive, but, you know, in Billy Bob dollars, it could be stupid expensive. You never know. And it's a personal site, so it, it's not like he does this is for fun. It's not like this is a money-making website for him where he's, you know, having huge advertising budgets being spent and, you know, people coming there and buying products off his website and, you know, supplements and all kinds of stuff. It, you know, it's just a personal site. Well, now that little insecure box is going to pop up, the red insecure box in the top left corner. And just like the risk reversal seal, and just like the McAfee safe seals and the Norton safe seals and all that stuff, it's going to lead people to leave websites faster. They're not going to go as deep into the site. Um, I literally was talking about this on the show yesterday, and I had a caller call in literally freaking out because she'd never noticed the little eye up there before, and she clicked on it and saw that, oh, my gosh, this website's using 45 cookies on my computer and this and this and this. And she, she really got, like, freaked out about it. And I had to talk her down a little bit. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know all right cookies are delicious they're they're good right cookies are a good thing um <laughs> cookies help websites remember things about us like when you go to southwest.com and you want to book flight from this state to this state and then you go over to united but you use the same tab and you're like oh i didn't mean to do that and you go back to southwest and it magically remembers your travel dates that's a cookie so good stuff right cookies are also the things that allow websites to know where you've been before. So if you do search for airfare and then you go to any other website on the planet, every ad you see will be about airfare. So, so on and so forth. So the bottom line here is if you're a website owner, operator, if you're somebody that has that kind of element to your business and you do not have a secure socket layer, your life is going to become increasingly miserable until you get one because Google Chrome has 50% plus of all internet browsing activity. So half the people on the Internet are using Google Chrome, and Google Chrome is going to put a big, fat, red stop sign in the top left corner right where people type in the URL if your website is not secure. So you can give the guys at Schrock Interactive a call, 402-934-9423. It's in the Omaha Service Center. They can get you fixed up and set up and, and get this taken care of for you so it's not a problem. But every time we warn, we say, hey, this is coming. And then we say, hey, this is here. And then a week later, we get a call from my business. It's like, I had no idea this was going to happen. I listen to you every week. Why didn't you talk about it? I'm All right, uh, Mr. Producer, mark the tape. 7.40 a.m. Sunday, April 9. We talked about it. All right. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Pete, you're the first caller, the second caller of the program today. Second caller. Ed, was, you're, you're the one and a half caller of the program, Pete. What can I do for you on Compute This today? Uh got a computer at work, and I got a call from this web techno that they claim they can secure our, my computer system. Oh, yeah. And I, and I do, do stuff. Uh, I've got a point-of-sale system that's uh, web-based. I, it, it, it's kind of slow just because we don't have fiber optics where I'm at. But uh, It's kind of slow because I don't have fiber. Man, I don't have fiber in my house either. But, you call it my internet uh, slow? <laughs> but anyway, my question is, are you familiar with a firm called Web Techno that supposedly secures your computer when your security expires or whatever? Gotcha. Well, the only I just did a quick – I don't want to ever just assume I know everything, right? Because I, as I'm reminded quite often, I don't. Um, so 
I did a quick Google search just to make sure that, you know, web techno isn't laying down some wicked beats in the security industry here. And it turns out they're not. Um, the only web techno I can find is actually a, a, a web design company. Um, and I don't see any security apparatus company here at all. Now, the fact that it popped up on your screen with an 800 number, that alone tells me that uh, it's, a, it's what we call a fake alert. Yeah. So, for example, what are you running for antivirus? Uh, Norton. The endpoint that we offer? Or like uh, Norton Security. Okay. Which one? Which one are you using? Uh, I can't remember. I'm not at work right now. Oh, that's so. right. Did Did you buy it from us? I guess. No, I I just got it. Okay, it cool. That's it. That's all right. I'm not I'm not knocking you. Are you running Secure Updater on your computer to keep your third party software current? I. You know what? I couldn't tell you. Okay, that's that's cool. So basically, odds are you're not because you would know if you're running Secure Updater. The second thing is with the Norton the Norton Security is not bad. Um, especially if you have multiple computers, it can be a cost-effective way of getting some Norton protection. It's not as effective as the endpoint we offer because it's not actively managed, but it's much, much, much better. I'd rather see you with that than one of the freebies out there like Avast or AVG. The fact that you are running a decent antivirus program is the only reason your computer is not infected right now. Okay. Because what happened is you were on the Internet browsing around, and a website you, that you went to had an ad that popped up on the screen. And the ad, as part of the normal detection process, said, are you running the current version of Flash? And the answer was no, or Java or whatever program. And the answer was no. And as a result, you were thrown to a web page. You were browser hijacked and thrown to a web page that put up an 800 number saying, call this number. And they want you to call the number because then they can get into your computer. Now, if you would have had a, a piece of junk antivirus like an Avast or an AVG or no antivirus at all or Windows Defender, uh, what would have happened is you wouldn't have gotten the pop-up page. You would have gotten a pop-up screen on your computer because the virus would have infected your computer. But because you had decent antivirus, the virus couldn't get into your computer, so instead they just took you to the web page. Because if they can't break into your computer through a technological means, through the hardware uh -huh. or the software, the third easiest way, or in some cases the first easiest way, to get into somebody's computer is through the wetware. You know what the wetware is? No. That's you. Okay. Yeah, you call the 800. You're the wetware. You're, you're a bag of 80% water. You call that. You call the 800 number, and they say, oh, yes, we'll take a look at this. We we bookie, 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 techno secure. You know, you let us into the computer, and, uh, you, know, you know, we go to Team Viewer, and even though it says only, you know, don't use for commercial use, we're going to use this for commercial use anyway, and we go into it, and oh, there we go, and voila. Oh, you're All infected, right. you know, and then, you, then they're like, for only $400, we can protect your computer forever. You know, come on, pay the 400 and people actually pay it. So okay. the first thing is, is your pro if it took you to a web page, that usually means you're okay. If you restart the computer, you should be good to go. Now, the Norton Security did a pretty good job of keeping you safe on this one. It's, it saved you from the bullet on this one. But if that would have been a ransomware attack, there's no guarantee the Norton Security would have stopped that. And the ransomware is what it encrypts everything on your hard drive and everything across your network and then demands a ransom in Bitcoin to, un to decrypt everything. Um, so basically what we recommend at Schrock is Semantic Endpoint, uh, which is the same stuff that, like, you know, the big boys use. It's what the University of Nebraska uses. The federal government uses it. Um, you know, it, it's what the big guys use. Um, you're not doing bad with the, with the Norton. Probably you, you got a five license, uh, you know, piece of software and you have more than one computer in the store or in, the, in your business. Um, of course, with the endpoint, it's a per computer deal, so it can get a little expensive if you have a lot. That's why we have corporate service agreements that with mm -hmm. a security add-on that's a little less expensive. Yeah. Um, secure Updater is something I would strongly recommend you add to the computer. Now, what Secure Updater does is it automatically and silently updates all of the third-party software on your computer. So the third-party software is programs that are on your computer when you get it that Microsoft didn't make. So like Flash, Java. Um, well, I used to say Skype, but Microsoft bought them. Um, Adobe Reader, things like that. Just stuff that, yeah, there's an upgrade or an update, but people don't ever install them because who knows. The reason they came out with an update is because there was a vulnerability, and the, the company doesn't make updates for fun. They patch the vulnerability. So get Secure Updater on the computer. There's a two-week free trial that you can actually get at secureupdater.com. It'll blow your mind how out of date your computer is. It'll be like, you know, updating four of 12. And you're like, what? There were 12 programs that needed updates? Why didn't I know about that? And then you'll see Secure Updater on a daily basis. Just like, It pops a little flag saying, update's complete. And you're like, I didn't even know it was updating, especially if you have a solid state. You don't even know what's going on. You're like, wow, the computer didn't even slow down. So, yeah, you're, it sounds like you're good to go. 
as far as the security, I would recommend adding the uh, secure updater to the package there to make sure that you've got that third-party solution in place so that you don't get kicked off to pages like that. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for the call, Thank Pete. You. Appreciate it. You bet. All righty. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program. Just like Ed and Pete, you can get in the drawing as well, and that's what Jill has done. Jill, how can I help you today on Compute This? Well, I have a question about, I, I think I need to bring my Dell laptop in and have you look at it, because I have no idea what's going on with it, but okay. it's really slow, and I know I need better security. Can I ask you a quick question about my iPhone? Sure. It, is it secure at all since I've updated to the new 10 iOS thingy or whatever they call that? Mm -hmm. I don't know the right names. I don't speak computer. That's what you're talking just fine to me. I understand exactly what you're saying. <laughs> So is it more secure now with that, or do you just talk about one earlier? And I thought, oh, is, do I need a new update on my phone also, and I didn't realize it. Gotcha. This update was pushed out by Apple last week. So have you got, have you got one in the last week? No. It's been okay. a month. So something like that. Gotcha. So you know, here's the thing. You, you're probably going to get it soon. It, like I said, the carrier sometimes slows it down a little bit. So you'll probably get it soon. But here's the deal that's going on with that. The story we were talking about was Android and iPhone. They both use the same Wi-Fi chipset in the phone. It's made by Broadcom is the company that makes it. And there was actually a bug in the programming of the Wi-Fi chip. Now, this kind of gets in the weeds a little bit. But in a related news story, um, have you heard about all these North Korean rockets that they're launching lately? They, yeah. they keep launching these rockets, and they keep blowing up, right? And yeah. there was all of a sudden some talk that the United States might be sabotaging these missiles and making them blow up. Now, oh, we're so nutty about that. I'm so glad we know how to do that. <laughs> well, and how do we do that? Well, basically, they, they can't import microchips and stuff into North Korea because of the sanctions. So basically, what, what happens is they have to smuggle them. Well, you know, the CIA doing their job, you know, yeah. gets a bunch of chips that are infected with malware and puts them, gives them to the smugglers, and they smuggle them into North Korea. So North Korea thinks they're pulling a fast one. Ho, 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 we got chips. And he eats them all, like all of the chips. And then, and then he takes the rest and he puts them in his missiles. And the missile is like, when you get to this altitude, cause the missile to spin left, right, up, down, whatever you have to do to blow it up. And it blows up. So it's an infected hardware chain. This is similar, except that it wasn't a purposeful infection. All these phones use the same chip, and a vulnerability was discovered in the chip by the bad guys. And the bad guys can now use that vulnerability to run programs inside the Wi-Fi chip, almost like a second computer in your phone. It's oh. wicked smart how they did it. Um, but this patch will fix that. So that, oh. that's, that's what we were talking about. So I need to, if I'm a little bit techy dummy, which I admit I am, I need to go to iPhone Store or Verizon and have them make sure that I have this downloaded. You can do that. Otherwise, your phone is going to pop up. Apple, there's no joke when it comes to updates. It's going to pop up like the light of day and be like, you need to do an update. And it's going to bug you every single day until you do it. Multiple times a day, in fact. It's no joke. So if there's an update, you'll know it. <laughs> well, that's busy people. That's what? That's good for busy people. That, that is. All the time to remind you because you get distracted, you know, when you're running around doing everything you need to do. Absolutely. So, yeah, it'll pop right up and tell you if you need it. Okay. And so when, how long does your um, handy-dandy um, converter sale thing go on now again? Yep. The ultimate upgrade, uh, there's not really a deadline on it. Usually we run it for about three weeks or until we can't get any more solid-state hard drives. Uh, we don't know exactly what the limit is on them. We know we've got a guarantee of 50. We might be able to get more than that like we did last year, but they wouldn't guarantee that to us at the prices we're paying. Uh, if somebody else comes along and wants to buy them at the regular prices, they're going to sell them. Um, so basically, we, we're getting them at a good price. That's how we're getting them into the computer. So right now, we're still good to go. If you order one today, the ones that were ordered last week were, deliver, were starting to be delivered already. So we're, we're going to tell you 14 business days when we sell them, but we're averaging about seven days for delivery right now. Okay, and that would update my Dell and make it secure and all that stuff. It would be part of the update. Uh, yeah, it would it would make it a lot. Windows 10 is a lot more secure than Windows Vista, first of all. Secondly, if you have antivirus software or something on your Dell that you want to move over, we can move it over. If you want to add new antivirus software, we can put that on there for you, too. We can get you all taken care of and secured, Jill, so that your computer is safe to use on the Internet for anything you want to do. Thank you very much for the call, Jill. I appreciate it. We do have you in the drawing as well. 
402-558-1110, Doug, you're next up on the program. How can I help you on Compute This today? Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Thor. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm one of your regular customers. Uh, thank you. Listen to you every Sunday, and I think I might have gotten the last uh, holiday update thing. I just got it a little about 10 days ago. Thank you so much. I think you might have answered my question to, uh, uh, to Jill because I just turned in my to Sprint my uh, flip phone and got me a Apple so I could horse around. <laughs> now, and you were mentioning that that chip can be uh, 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 hacked, and and uh, uh, Sprint, you, you you told her and both all of us that uh, it's going to um, let us know when it. When we need to do something? Oh, yeah. When there is a software update, it will pop right up and tell you there's a software update, oh. especially on Apple, because it's going to ask you to enter your, your password to do the update. Okay. And that, so i got to create an Apple password. Yeah, I think I've got to do that anyway. Um, but I do get onto the uh, email, so I must be getting on, on the Internet here somehow. Oh, yeah. You've already got a password. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, yeah you've, you're good to go. You've already got a password for that. Uh, yeah, and now and then this thing doesn't need secure updater and all that stuff because it's not a regular computer. It's just a nope. Yeah, the, the phones are different. So like, if you have an Android phone or an iPhone, you don't need antivirus software right now. There's nothing that can really penetrate the phone unless you're unlocking your phone and downloading apps from unauthorized places. Which, if you're doing that, you know you're doing it. In that case, you want to have some kind of malware protection. Uh, also, uh, on your phone, the lovely Kimberly texted in and said, you know, you can go to settings and uh, under general software, and you, it'll tell you if there's an update available. So if you have an iPhone, you can go to settings and general software, and it'll tell you if there's an update available. Uh, but it will just, it'll pop up in your face if there's an update available. Oh, very good. Thank you so much. No sweat. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, 402-558-1110, Moving right along. Jim, you're next up on the show. How can I help you uncompute this? If I buy uh, earbuds to use on a PC, what impedance earbuds should I buy? My goodness, I have n I have no idea what that means. You know what? I read the reviews and I buy the pair that sounds the best. It has rich bass and good treble. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> now, see, I'm not an audiophile. I'm a radio guy in in ways, and I'm a computer guy in ways, and I'm a business guy in ways. But I I, I go deep enough into each of those those lakes that I can talk with some knowledge, and I. Yeah, I don't – is that the decibel rating of the earbud? I don't know. Uh, well, it's, resi it's resistance. Like if I have a stereo system and I put – and it's geared for 8-ohm speakers. Okay. And if I get to put in several speakers, you can drop the impedance enough that you would affect the output transistors. On oh, yeah. The I, used amplifier. To, I used to do that all the time when I was a kid. I had a boom box that you could take speakers and you could stick the wires in the back on the clips, you know. And obviously, when you're like a preteen, more speakers is better, right? right? So you get all the speakers, any speaker you could take and speakers out of things. I mean, any speaker right. you could find, and you get, you get old car speakers, but you find that after you put more speakers on, it gets quieter, which is kind of counterintuitive. Well, and then what, you're, what you end up doing is blowing your output transistors in your amplifier. And oh. that's what I don't want to do on the PC if my earbuds are too low impedance. Gotcha. So with, with earbuds, the, the tolerance levels are, are – there's nowhere near the variance in settings and things that, uh, that you can find in a regular set of speakers. I can tell you from experience with earbuds, um, the deeper they go in your ear canal, the better they're going to sound. Some people can stand that. Some people can't. Um, but basically, it's, it, the better seal it makes in your ear canal, the better they're going to sound. The deeper it goes in your ear, the richer the bass is going to be. Um, the deeper they go in your ear, the worse your hearing loss is going to be if you play it too loud. Um, the earbuds that basically just kind of hang in your ear canals, you're losing a lot of sound out into the air. Um, it, so like when I work out, for example, I have ones that go into my ear canals. I can't hear the treadmill anymore, you know, and, but I can hear, I can hear my music really good. Um, so I guess, you know, what I would, what I would recommend doing is going onto Amazon and looking at all the earbuds and there's, there's thousands of selections and you can spend, you know, six bucks on a pair of earbuds, or you can spend $160 on a pair of Bose earbuds. But I can tell you from experience, like I bought some uh, Panasonic, you know, $10 earbuds that had a little cone that went down in the ear canal, and they were amazing. I used them until the wire broke. I mean, because that's what always happens to earbuds. I don't care if you buy Bose or you buy $10 Panasonic earbuds. What's the first thing 
what is the first thing that goes every time? It's the wire. Okay. Well, what's the prize for stumping the host? That's a great question because, you know, it's like, I, you know, now you see, if I start that, though, then the people are going to call me and like, start asking me questions about the, do you, okay, Jim, uh, what is the electrical cyclical rate of brain activity? <laughs> I learned this in a doctor's appointment yesterday. Nine hertz. Really? Nine hertz. There we go. Now we're even. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the call, Jim. I appreciate thank it. You. <laughs> All right. 402 558 Patty, you're next up. Patty, what foreign country yeah. are you in, Patty? Uh, I'm in Nebraska country, but I'm going to go to South America. Oh, okay. And so I just want to know if your tablet is going to have a charging problem will it blow up will you know oh yeah if you try to stick it into that weird south american outlet it'll completely explode you need a you need a converter um that that turn that seriously that changes the you wouldn't be able to plug it in now it just so happens in my omaha service center uh, alfonso is from venezuela Okay. And he could tell you exactly what charger to buy for Venezuela. He could walk you right through it. Uh, he's in the Omaha Service Center. If you want to call in and talk to him, okay. he'll be there on Monday. Uh, but you could ask okay. him, you know, exactly what converter do I need. And he'll tell you in his little South American. I bought some linen pants the other day, and I was like, I can't wait to wear them into work and show Alfonso my linen pants. I could get a little hat and go to South America with him. All right. Thank you for calling, Patty. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. John, RJ, stay on the line there. I'll take your calls off the air here in just a moment. And I need to draw a winner for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Today's winner. See, we really we really draw the winners. Today's winner. Jill, no joke. Congratulations. You got yourself a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Kathy will get a hold of you on Monday and get that out to you. Thanks for watching on Facebook. I got to take two calls off the air. And then, you know, I do have a couple small things to talk about. We won't call it an after-the-show show or a double Schrock. But uh, we'll, we'll say a few things on Facebook here afterwards. So stick with us on Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. And we'll see you here again next Sunday for another exciting edition of Compute This. This is Nebraska's news, weather, and traffic station. This is News Radio 1110, KFA. All right, guys, I got to take two calls here, real quick, because people are holding, and I'll be right with you. All right, you get to listen in, okay? Thanks for holding, John. This is Thor. How can I help you? Thank you. Yep. You know, we thought about it. The, uh, the problem is it would cannibalize the Omaha Service Center. Yeah, it sure would. I mean, the, uh, the, the, we were looking at moving to Bellevue, but we, uh, we think we found a way to stay in Papillion, but we're just going to go to 84th Street. We're going to see if the, if the numbers work on the math. We were, and uh, you know the construction costs just absolutely murdered us. But here's the thing that's going to happen: the, there is such I, I'm I'm so neck deep into real estate right now, looking into all these locations for service centers. There is so much real estate out there, and it's all vacant, and they want ridiculous amounts of money. We're talking sometimes 35, 40 bucks a square foot, and you're just like, no, that's how would you stay in business? That's just stupid. That's why all these mall stores are closing. They can't afford thirty-five dollar a square foot rent in a mall. So and selling, you know, selling kids jeans that don't have disposable income. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it's going to once that happens, once the retail apocalypse is at its peak, that'll be the time for us to to do a massive expansion of Schrock into uh, into multiple cities with all the real estates available and cheap. OK. Hmm. 
Right. Yep. Yeah, there, there's a program. Yeah, there's a program actually that, that works really well for that. When you want to uninstall something that can't be uninstalled through traditional means, we the first go-to that we'll use is Revo Uninstaller. Oh yeah, yeah, it'll go it'll go through and find it'll find it in the registry and then just start and start blasting it back from there. So uh, it's Revo Uninstaller, R E V O. There's Yeah, give that one a whirl. It should take care of you. Yeah, you don't want to mess up in the registry. Yeah, I don't know why. It, should, it shouldn't be hard to get rid of. It should just go away. So that's the thing. I... It could, yeah, because it's going to be the same registry entries. Sounds good. Thank you, John. Have a good one. Bye bye. That's awesome. So he called in and asked, like, how do I uninstall a program that I well, went to add remove programs and uninstalled it and it's gone, but it's not gone. It's, it's not in add remove programs anymore, but how do I get rid of it now? And then I'm just telling him, we'll get Revo uninstaller and it'll find it. And he's like, I suppose I could just install the program again and then uninstall it a second time. I'm like, that would work too. Well, he's like, thank you. I'm like, do anything I just, I just i'm a sounding board that's what i am that's awesome all right let's one more call sorry guys thanks for hanging with me one more call all right thanks for holding rj how can i help you today good morning yeah Well, the uh, as far as the recycling of the computers, the uh, the ultimate upgrade, you know, we, we're giving you a discount for bringing one in, uh, but we don't actually get anything from your recycle. Like there's no there's no profit motive for us. If you brought in like 12 recycles, you know, yeah. But yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, how many recycles do I have to bring in to get a free computer? You know, it'd be like a semi load, I guess. I don't know. But uh, but basically, the uh, the cool thing is, though, with like laptops, desktops, printers, keyboards, mice, scanners, anything like that, we recycle those for free all day, every day. You don't have to pay anything. The only thing we charge for are monitors because we actually have to pay a lot of money to get rid of those. So we charge 15 bucks regardless of size or weight. So what ends up happening is all the small ones people take to like Goodwill where they charge like, you know, next to nothing. But the Sony 19 inch Sony Trinitron monitors that weigh as much as, you know, a small child, they'll bring those into us and then we can pay 15 bucks and save some money uh, basically we usually run us the ultimate upgrade about three weeks or until we can't get the solid state hard drives at that price anymore and then we have to end it when that happens so right now we're still good to go we have we have more in the route oh no it's a real thing like uh, in a computer you I guess I didn't explain this I should have but in a computer when you, you have a hard drive that saves all your information and the hard drive has platters that spin like a record, and there's like a head that reads the record, basically. It, it literally is 20th century technology. Um, and so here we are, you know, I saw a story that we actually have flying cars now, and but you still have a hard drive that spins like a record. What's up with that? I mean, we don't even use records anymore. Like we had CDs, then we had DVDs, now we have streaming music. Now, well, a solid state hard drive is like streaming music. I mean, it, it's literally no moving parts, it's all microchips, and it's wicked fast. Like you hit the power button on the computer and it boots in four to six seconds from cold. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Well, you'll still have a start button in Windows 10 for now. Um, so yeah, it's not going anywhere just yet, but it'll, it'll transform. It'll be different than it is now.
Yep. Yeah, it's 449, so it's better than 450. All right, RJ, I got to run, buddy, but thanks for calling the program. I don't know. How do you stop a rhinoceros from jumping on the bed? <laughs> All right, crazy glue on the ceiling. Got it. <laughs> Bye. It's the joke hour now. All right, so I've got to split here pretty quick because I got hungry kiddos that are waiting for breakfast. But um, last week I talked to you a little bit about potentially moving the Papillion Service Center uh, to Bellevue. Uh, we were talking about maybe moving it to Samson Way because uh, our lease is up where we're at in December and we're not really happy with the location we're in anymore. The, you know, it's just, it's not what it was when we moved in five years ago and it's not doing as well as we would have liked. Like I said, our Omaha location is going gangbusters and the Papillion location is not doing bad. I mean, it's profitable, but it's not growing like Omaha is. I mean, Omaha is on track within the next three years to be bigger than our Lincoln Service Center. And Lincoln has been there for 18 years. So that's a, that's a huge deal. So I guess the, uh, the thing we were looking at is moving there. And we had a lot of people that popped onto Facebook um, and, and said, hey, don't do this or move it here or don't move it to Bellevue. We love it in Papillion or can you keep it in La Vista? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, I, I take your guys' comments seriously. So we went ahead and looked at some different property. Um, there's a business development that is at 84th and Highway 370. Uh, there's a Jimmy Egg there. There's a Jimmy John's there. Uh, there's a really great restaurant, Ollie and Hobbs. If you haven't eaten at Ollie and Hobbs Craft Kitchen, it's amazing. Didn't like the wild rice place so much, but the, the, the Ollie and Hobbs place is great. So check that out. But uh, there's one bay available in that, that plaza that we might be able to get. Um, and if we get that bay, um, that would be a viable place for us to move. So we're looking at possibly looking into that. So I guess if, uh, if yeah, Nan says, Nan, I knew I was talking to you here. She's popping up on Facebook. That sounds great. Uh, let's see. Thomas is like, we need one in Sioux Falls. So maybe my in-laws will finally listen to me and stop buying Dells and HPs from Best Buy. Well, Thomas, they can order from ShrockInnovations.com now. Because actually what we're going to start doing is uh, it's normally when we put a service center, like when we put the Omaha service center in and started the show here on KFAB, it took what? I would say a year and a half for that service center to really catch on to the point where it was self-sufficient. Lincoln was literally subsidizing it for a year and a half. So what we want to try to do now is we want to try to take the radio show, and you notice we've been kind of generically white boxing it on the air. We're not saying KFAB so much. Uh, you know, we're, we're not playing the the Tom the, the Voorhees or Tom Becca, you know, not Tom Becca, Tom Becca. So, see, this is why I can't say this stuff on the air. Um, but, <laughs> you know, the... Uh, God, he has me on the show all the time. What's his name? Jerry no, the the drive time. The evening drive. Chris Baker. God, he's so cool to me, and I can't even remember his name. I hope he's not watching right now. God. But uh, but anyway, the uh, you know all their sounders and stuff are out because we're going to take the radio show and we're going to white box it and then run it in like Sioux Falls, for example. And then we're going to when we put the radio show in like five different cities, we'll see from website activity, if people are buying Secure Update or if people are buying Endpoint, if they're ordering computers, things like that. And we can literally burn up that year and a half time of building up that audience before we put the service center in. And the website will generate enough revenue to cover the cost of the radio show in theory. Or if the radio show doesn't take off, we never put a service center there. And thank God we didn't because it would have failed. And now we don't have to ex use that expenditure anymore. Um, Thor is getting old and my memory is starting to go. Thank you, lovely Kimberly, for that. Uh, that gentle reminder that I'm being watched while I have hungry kiddos. <laughs> uh, check retail as a whole. Amazon has taken their market share. You'll have to acclimate. Amazon has taken 50% of retail business. That is absolutely right, Cy. Si, but we're not retail. We're service. Ah, ah. They're trying to take our service business. There's, you can get, actually, they, they asked me, do you want to be like an Amazon service provider? So you can buy like an $80 hard drive on Amazon and then you put it on <laughs> and they want to charge you $80 to have a technician come out and install it. Well, if you're buying a hard drive on Amazon, you probably know how to install it. It's like, you know, when you buy like, I'm going to buy a lawnmower engine on Amazon, you know, and yeah, whatever. So um, now I'm just talking in circles. All right. So let's see. Any others? Here we go. Per below, sir. Yep. I saw it. I saw it. I, I, I saw it. But, uh, and yes, you're right, Amazon is eating some lunch at some retailers, but here's what's going to happen. Do you know that 75% of people prefer to shop in an actual retail environment as opposed to an online environment? 
Uh, that is evidenced by the fact that I've sold three computers for the ultimate upgrade on our website, and we have sold over 20 in the service centers in the last week. Uh, so people prefer to come into the service centers and purchase rather than buying it online. Um, they like to deal with the people. They like to have that, that knowledgeable person helping them when they actually feel like they're getting helped. Now, when you look at the stores that are going out of business, and there was a, there's nine on the chopping block right now. It looks like Charming Charlie is in trouble. Uh, they may be doing a bankruptcy here soon. Rue 21 uh, in the mall, the kids' clothing place is looking bad right now. New York and company is looking bad. Um, basically, what happened in the malls is all the stores in the malls are clothing stores. And they all sell the exact same clothing, different sizes, different styles, but they're all selling apparel. And they're all paying like $35 a square foot in rent, and none of their customers have money anymore. I bought t-shirts on Amazon the other day. I wanted to get some nice logoed Marvel t-shirts. I can't wear t-shirts on the air here, you know, because you know, my Punisher t-shirt might not put the you know, exact marketing message that I'm looking for. But buying clothes on Amazon is not fun. It's really not because you get them and they don't fit. And then you have to send them back. Sometimes they're shipping, sometimes there's not. It's not fun. And so what's gonna happen is the malls are gonna start to go under. Some of them are gonna reinvent themselves like the South Roads Technology Plaza. Yeah, right. Um, or, you know, Crossroads is, you know, added a target. They're, they're gonna reinvent themselves. Grade A malls are not having a problem. Village Point is not having a problem. Shadow Lake is. Um, you know, that's Gordman's going under. That's a problem. Uh, what is it, the, the shoe store, uh, Payless shoe store is going under. That's a problem. DSW is not going under. They don't make a lot of their own shoes though, you know? So there's some, there's some differences there. So the problem is what's gonna happen is this is gonna weed out, this is creative destruction. It's gonna weed out the weak people. It's gonna weed out the bad malls. Those malls are gonna be forced to reinvent themselves, which includes lowering the rent. The rent is too dang high. Oh my gosh, it's too high everywhere. Uh, so they're going to lower the rents, which is going to bring businesses back in, which is why right now in Old Town Bellevue and the Fort Crook Corridor, there is a resurgence of business, especially restaurant happening right now, because people, the rent's low enough that people can take a chance. They can take their dream and they can try to make it happen. When your rent's $35 a square foot, you have, you, you have a really small dream. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's just a little square feet there. All right, guys, I got to get going. Uh, I got to get uh, some, some uh, Panera for the kiddos. I'll be at the Panera at 72nd if you want to uh, bounce by and find me. I'll be there briefly, just long enough to get a couple pastries and out the door. But uh, until then, we'll see you guys again next Sunday for another edition of Compute This. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Have a great day.